<laughs> well, hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Ascension Playground. My name is Ursula O'Farrell, and today our guest on the playground is my dear friend, Sybil Starr. Hi, Sybil! Hi, <laughs> Ursula! <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Mercury is retrograde. This is our take three of trying to find a way to navigate and toggle um, so that we can bring forward to you, our listeners, very simple, straightforward messages for what to look forward to in the new year ahead of an amazing 2023. So Sybil, I'm here to just learn from you and hopefully the technology will keep being supported. <laughs> welcome, uh, welcome. <laughs> well, you are welcome. Thank you. And I just feel, I feel like we are heading into some very exciting times. Times. The astrology just really shows that over the next few years that um, there's a huge shift in consciousness taking place and the astrology is showing us what is in the field and it's it's very exciting. So, yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, all of the outer planets, they have been traveling in earth and water signs, which is very grounded and very emotional. They're moving into fire and air signs, which is, uh, you know, very much about the shift in consciousness. So anyway, so that's where we're going. Okay, so I'm going to share the chart for um, January 1st at uh, midnight uh, when the year starts. And so you can kind of see where things are. And But then there are going to be moving. And I could actually, you know, create a chart, let's say, for March, if that would be helpful, because that's when things change. But anyway, let's look at this chart. And I will. All right. Can you see it? Can you see it's it? It's beautiful. Uh, it's beautiful. All right. All right. All right. So, um, so anyway, so this is the chart for um, January 1st, 2023 at midnight. So the beginning of the year. So some of the things that are happening, we're going to be talking about first is uh, the planet Saturn, which uh, is here at 22 degrees of Aquarius on January 1st by March on March 7th. Saturn, well, Saturn continues in March forward uh, through the end of Aquarius, and by March 7th, we'll be in Pisces, okay? And so I guess, you know, what does Saturn mean? Saturn represents our work. It, Saturn is about manifestation. Whenever Saturn is, especially if, you know, if, if I see that I'm having a Saturn transit, I, I know I'm going to be working somewhere and the chart's going to be showing me what I'm going to be working on and what area of my life it's going to be impacting. And um, so Saturn moving into Pisces and Pisces, you know, is very much about the inner world. So I feel like it's showing us that, well, number one, I feel like it's about manifestation and it's showing us how we manifest through the use of our mind through the use of aligning our mind and our heart and and that the outer world the external world is actually a reflection of our inner world and so i feel like what is going to be showing up as we understand the laws of manifestation things are going to be happening much more quickly okay uh it's because pisces is um you know, it's, 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 it's a much more diffuse field and it's, it's very metaphysical. It's a very metaphysical kind of an energy. So we're learning the metaphysical laws of manifestation through a Saturn moving through Pisces. Okay. There's going to be a major conjunction of Saturn and Neptune and Neptune is the ruler of Pisces uh, at zero degrees Aries in 2026. Wow. And the Kogi say that that is when the real shift is happening. I think we're preparing now. And this is one of the pieces. Um, it, it is the understanding how the laws of manifestation work. And it comes, it's not about changing the inner world. It's about changing, excuse me, it's not about changing the external world. It's as we change our inner world, the world is reflected back to us. Okay. And so I feel like that is one really major piece. 
Um, it's it's called the uh, also the the practical idealist or the practical mystic. Oh, I like that. The practical mm -hmm. mystic. That sounds yeah. good. So this is going to affect everybody, right? Because right. it's it's one of those. The further out you go, um, it's it's a generational, right? Um, yes. So it's going to affect everybody. So can you say that again? Saturn is in Aquarius now, but it will move into Pisces. And when it moves into the water element of Pisces, I think he's a practical. Idea. Saturn is the practical piece, yes. Uh, and, and so it's about bringing, it's grounding our dreams in reality. It's like okay. a whole new structure. Um, yes. To work is. with the Pisces is the final the sign of the zodiac so all this living experience all these many lifetimes it's held in the ocean of pisces so when the structure of saturn comes and moves from aquarius air into the water it feels like what you're saying and we're going within and miracles will happen basically from our inner work not the outer work did i get that that's absolutely correct. Yeah, this, and Saturn is structure. You know, they often call it creating form out of the formless. You know, it is, it's kind of creating, you know, and even though Pisces is a water sign, it also has an air element to me. It kind of feels like, because it's very metaphysical, very mystical. And it, you know, the water, you know, is, is right, you know, that place where, you know, we are all one and merge with each other. And, and it is also kind of like the uh, Aquarius and Pisces both have this element of, deep metaphysical understanding of the universe. Wow, I love that, what you just said, because for me, what's coming up is this whole idea of going galactic, going at, yeah, having the structure of understanding ourselves beyond the earth plane, but to embrace this broader, I don't know, multi-dimensional, uh, intra-dimensional, inter-dimensional, there's more to us than we imagine. So when Saturn moves into Pisces, I feel like our inner structure is going to align much more with this broader galactic, more multidimensional beingness. Does that, does that sit well? Oh, that's absolutely perfect, Ursula. You said it's in such a lovely way. Oh, I'm and just trying to put the tea leaves, but you did yeah. mention the Kogis and I'd love to um, because you're, you know, very advanced, if someone listening didn't know what a Kogi was, that was talking about the Neptune, Saturn, and who else was joining? <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, it was Neptune and Saturn conjunct at zero degrees Aries, which is the beginning of all things. And, um, yeah, and, and so... Uh, the Kogi, the Kogi are, are a people who live in Colombia and they didn't, they live in the mountains and they, they're indigenous people and they didn't have any interaction with the modern world until I think it was the 1970s. And they have since started sharing their teachings with us. They say they're the direct descendants of Atlantis. And, oh my God. Yeah, Isn't that amazing? And, to yeah. And yeah. Oh my gosh, look at this. Hold on just a second. I didn't realize my computer had gotten unplugged. Hold on. <laughs> okay, well, while well, Sybil is plugging herself Here we go. <laughs> Good now. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, Mercury retrograde again. Today. Don't ever get it. <laughs> you got to replug back in. Well, the idea yeah. of the Kogis of like almost like these First Nation people, the um, the ancestors, it's almost like we go back in time and their connection, let's say, with the Atlantis, the time of Atlantis. You know, when you listen to Dolores Cannon and other spiritual teachers, you understand that many who experienced Atlantis have now reincarnated. And there's a reason for that. It's almost like we have to go backwards and re-experience and maybe make different choices for us in the moment before we can go forward. And tying back into that multidimensional galactic, it's pretty auspicious. And you said that's 2026 when the Yes, yeah. February 20th, 2026. That's the exact conjunction. They're traveling together before that and after that at zero degrees Aries. It's a very interesting um, 
uh, uh, aspect that is happening. But uh, what I wanted to say, just one more thing about the Kogis, is is that they get their direction directly from Mother Earth. They oh. um, they live in caves until they're either nine or eighteen, and they never see the outer world except that cave. And they learn to listen to Mother Earth. Oh my goodness. And so they say the shift is happening, that there is a huge shift. In, well, I think we're preparing for it, but it's actually happening. Uh, and there's, you know, so many different um, channels and uh, people speaking now. I, I feel like we are really, this is for real. We're having a shift and the astrology shows it. And there's prophecies everywhere telling us this is the time. Wow, just that idea of not coming out of a cave for the first eight or nine years. It's almost like that womb of the earth, um, not releasing these beautiful, you know, embodied souls um, mm -hmm. to help support the collective in some amazing way. So mm -hmm. thank you for underscoring the Kogis. And, you know, that's how we hold astrology and the light language the, it shows potential, but when we start talking about the transpersonal or outer planets, it's almost like really pay attention because it's not just mm -hmm. about the personal, but it's about the whole world. And many are tracking this idea of the new earth moving from the third dimension into the fifth dimension. And some say we're toggling back and forth in our dream time. So it's very auspicious. So let's go back to 2023. It feels like Saturn in Aquarius now, when we get into, I think you said March, um, mm -hmm. Saturn will make an introduction into Pisces. So we'll get a flavor for that. But then mm -hmm. doesn't it go backwards into Aquarius and then back into no. Pisces? No, no, it doesn't it actually, do any of that. Yeah, it, stay, well, it does do that, but it stations at zero degrees Pisces. It doesn't re-enter Aquarius. Oh. Yeah, it does not re-enter Aquarius. Now, I'll be honest, Saturn doesn't particularly like Pisces. <laughs> and so, you know, Saturn, because Saturn really likes form and structure, and Pisces is the least structured uh, of all the signs. And so that's why it's very much about following the flow of energy and not be attached to plans. Like, like a plan is a general guideline. But to know that the energy is going to flow in the, it, it, it's allowing ourselves to trust our inner guidance and to be, that's our steer, steer, that that's what's steering us. Okay. Wow. And, and Saturn, you know, Saturn is a place of constriction sometimes because it's about, okay, when you're thinking of uh, like the birth process, it is the contractions that actually push the baby out, but it feels really uncomfortable. I do feel like, you know, that, that zero degrees Aries point that's coming up with Saturn and Neptune is very much like a birth into a new reality, wow. but we can we're starting to feel those birthing pains with Saturn and Pisces. We're coming up on it. Okay. Because oh. Pisces says, surrender, let go, trust, follow the energy. And Saturn is saying, but, 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 you know, well, I don't want like, to. Sounds like I Saturn, know what's happening. Saturn, yeah. Saturn's going to have to go through a death and rebirth for how mm -hmm. we look at structure. So there's mm -hmm. a different structure. And what I think I hear you saying is what we've navigated with before, that vehicle is not gonna move us to that zero degrees Aries point, right? It's if cool. those of you who are listening who've studied the Merkaba or our light body and how to navigate within our own inner selves, um, this is telling me the structure itself is going to be completely changed. So there's going to be a renewed Saturn in, in a different world because we can't bring the old structures with us, right? Simple. It just, That's it, correct. the planets will have to also themselves, because we're all interrelated, go through their own mm -hmm. transformation and transcendence in this last you know, Piscean. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think it's about uh, bringing Saturn into its highest frequency, you know, because Saturn can trigger fear. Okay. Yeah. That's the contractions, but it's our job to recognize what is happening and to trust and to take a deep breath and to move through it and follow the energy because yes, all of the structures in our world are yeah. changing. Yep. And Saturn also, isn't he like father time? So even time right. will change right? Mm -hmm. We're feeling it now, but imagine when Saturn goes into Pisces, it's like, 
warp time like there is no time we're going into quantum perhaps so fascinating just talking with you i feel like yeah even mm -hmm. thinking about the old planets they have to go through their evolutionary process as well so maybe time will really shift when he goes into well, absolutely because I, I, I think like you said ursula we we see time is speeding up the truth of it is is like what we're learning the real, real truth of it is there is no time that it is everything is happening simultaneously we are multi-dimensional beings having experiences in different dimensions in different timelines and this is part i believe of what we're starting to remember it's like you, you said we have to go back before we can go forward there's a piece of remembering mm -hmm. that that is happening and as we know as when we are shifting in and it is a five dense fifth density fifth dimension reality everything manifests immediately it is saturn father time that has slowed yeah, down yeah, yeah. our and was it saturn is very much about limitation and i've been listening to bashar and he said that we humans you know we have become masters at mastering limitation oh. and he said but it's time to let that go you know we know how to work with limitation it's now open up opening up to the expansiveness and the and the what is the true reality of, of a, the true nature of reality and so things are going to manifest very quickly and just pay attention to that in your world what's because you can change it. You know, if, if you've manifested something you don't like, all you need to do is kind of go back in and kind of readjust your course and see what did I do? How do I change this? Because we're learning how to manifest instantaneously. Wow, that's on the positive side, that's wonderful. And the other side is watch our thinking and where our heart is. But can you talk to me real quick before we leave Saturn? Like he's got 22 degrees, that's the master builder number. And then 27 minutes, which is nine or completion. So as we enter into January 1st of 2023, Sybil, it's almost like Saturn's got the builder, the structure, it's almost like the hurrah before he has to go, okay, time to evolve, try, right. you know, have right. my own evolutionary journey as I go slowly into Pisces. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when, right? So, and it's such human nature, right, to not want change. We prefer oh, yeah. things to go back to the, the time we thought was you know, idyllic, but it really wasn't when you look at it. So the only thing we have right now is this moment. And this is the great work of Eckhart Tolle, be here now. But that's right. the hardest place because there's mm -hmm. no past or, pre or future. It's just now. So when I see that 22 degrees Saturn, the builder, it's like somehow telling me, you know, be present, be present, everything will shift, but don't fear. If we go into fear, we'll manifest everything we're afraid of. Exactly. Like imagine, and here's the hard work, right? So it's, what do you imagine for a better world? What do you think the new earth looks like, feels like, smells like? And I love Bashar mm -hmm. because it's like, okay, we're getting some input as to how other civilizations or entities have already made it through their evolutionary journey. Sorry to digress, but I'm so excited. Now you made me feel like, okay, we can do yeah. this. We can do it, but we have to this. stay in that energy of gratitude. And mm -hmm. uh, it's not spiritual bypassing. Uh, we know it's coming. Here it comes. So it's like, are we ready? Are we going to clean up our act and try and get lighter? The ho-ho-pono-pono of forgiveness. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry to well, you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that Saturn in Aquarius, you know, Aquarius is a very visionary kind of an energy. It shows us the future. It shows us what can be. Um, and when it moves into Pisces, I feel like it's showing us the real work is within ourselves so that we can manifest this new world that, and as many say, Mother Earth is already there. We are just aligning with her. She is existing. She's existing in more than one dimension. And we want to exist in the fifth dimension with her. Yeah, I feel like it's like we're on a, on a, um, you know, in the swimming pool, you go up to the top of the, um, the board, <laughs> the diving board. And I think Saturn's going to be the one to help. Sometimes we need a little shove. <laughs> <laughs> mm. we're going you know it's not like we want to jump into the ocean right or the deep end but it feels like it's pretty auspicious to track saturn because mm. it's happening no matter what are you how are you going to greet it 
And so yeah. for me, I'm the type that prefers to like, when it's the right time, can someone help give me a little shove? <laughs> yeah. little Saturn bit. would be the one to do that. Yep. And you've got some, well, Saturn, I think only goes up to like nine degrees. So it isn't actually impacting your plant. Well, it comes pretty close to Pluto, I guess. Anyway. So anyway, uh, yeah. So, and then, so of course, and Saturn in Neptune, and well, Saturn in Pisces kind of the, the, um, well, the real uh, shadow of that is the fear of the unknown because you know Pisces really takes us into that unknown territory where we just where we you know it's kind of like when you're in the water and you just can't get up you can't get your feet you can't uh, you know you can't get grounded it's hard to get grounded with Saturn in Pisces okay and so there can be a, a, a fear of a loss of control and the thing is, that's the goal is to lose control. <laughs> or you know. the illusion that we were ever in control, right? Exactly. <laughs> to know the reality. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. That's quite auspicious. So we will all track Saturn. So let's summarize it real quick. I think you mentioned earlier, and forgive me if I got this wrong, but making your dreams real and yes. this idea of the power of manifestation so we can embrace Saturn moving into Pisces as the new structure for making our dreams come true or, or real, bring it into our reality. Does that and and that, that structure and that reality is created from within. It, you, the, the external world is a reflection of our inner world. And there's a great analogy that I love to use. It's like when we look in the mirror and we say, we're not smiling. We don't try to make the mirror smile. You know, we have to <laughs> smile. And that is, that. that is the way it works. And yeah. so I feel like this is the, the Piscean teaching. This is the Saturn and Pisces teaching, I mean. Wow. Wow. All right. So what's the second little tidbit you want to share? Uh, well, it's uh, not since we went through that big old Saturn. <laughs> It's a big one, and that is Pluto is beginning his journey through Aquarius. So show us Pluto on the chart. Right. right. So okay, Pluto, so right, yes, yeah, kicks off. Oh, I look at this. Pluto is up here, 27 degrees of Capricorn, 40 minutes, in a very tight conjunction with uh, wow. Venus and also conjunct Mercury. Okay, we've known about this Mercury Pluto conjunction. I mean, this. And so let me tell you about who Pluto is. And Pluto's been transiting through Capricorn. Pluto, it, it takes a long time for Pluto to transit a sign. It varies because Pluto has an elliptical um, orbit. And so it stays in some, time, some signs a very long time and other signs a very short time. And uh, it's, the time is starting to grow. And so it's been in Capricorn, I think, for about like 17, 18 years, something like that. I can't remember exactly when. But anyway, whatever sign Pluto is transiting, Pluto is the god of death. He's the god of death, transformation, and rebirth. Wherever Pluto shows up, it says there was something here that is either not authentic, not true, uh, something corrupted. Uh, it, it, it's it's like uh, Pluto is often you can compare it to lancing a wound, okay, because it lets out all of the um, poisons and toxins that have been held, and, and sometimes it's just simply stagnant. It, it's often compared as well to a snake shedding its skin what is no longer has life force letting go of what no longer has life force and the thing is in our own personal lives when pluto comes along you know what, what was authentic and true for us let's say 10 years ago just isn't we, we've changed you know and pluto comes along and wherever it's activating uh in your your chart it says there is a place here that needs that needs change there is uh, a death and rebirth process happening for it to give it new life to bring back passion and it's and it's very much about self-empowerment but it certainly shows us um you know it brings to light what has been hidden that needs to come to the light to, for healing okay and so pluto has been transiting through capricorn and Capricorn is the sign that has the most to do with our patriarchal, um, with patriarchy, put it that way. Uh, but it, but, uh, but it has to do more, more, it has to do with the institutions that hold up our civilization. 
Okay. It has to do with government. It has to do with banking, the media, our healthcare system, not necessarily healthcare providers, not doctors and nurses, but the system itself. Um, what other, what, what did I say? The media, anyway, uh, uh, corporations. Okay. Uh, all of the different things that have to do with kind of like the, the structures of our civilization. Okay, so and prior to Pluto transiting a Capricorn, it was transiting through Sagittarius and a Sagittarius, of course, has to do with religion. And this was when, you know, the, the big pedophilia scandal within the Catholic Church came to light. Okay, well, we're seeing what's happening in our world right now, uh, all of the corruption that is coming to light. Okay. Uh, it's been there. It's just, you know, we haven't had to look at it, but it, you know, Pluto helps us see through the illusion. It pulls down the veil. And Pluto is conjunct. Uh, the, um, it's, it's, it's the Pluto return of the chart of the United States. The chart of the United States, Pluto is at 27 degrees, 32 minutes of Capricorn. Uh, that's when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, uh, and, and history has shown every time a country goes through its Pluto return, some major changes happen because, you know, we're not aligned with maybe the vision for that, which we were, you know, mm -hmm. created. Okay. On one hand. So anyway, so that's really what I wanted to say about that. It's really significant. We're just seeing, you know, we know what we're seeing and it's true. I've heard okay. others talk about like the Pluto return for America is like an identity crisis that, you know, who are you really? You've just made it through the bumps and the, these mm -hmm. traumas that are ridiculous um, intensity. So who are you as a nation? But talk to me about this conjunction with Venus. It's so profound to see that 27 degree, you know, it merging is, yeah. of Venus with Pluto in, well, you can't really do the houses, but tell me what, what you think that means for the 1st of January, 2020. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting because the natal Pluto in the chart of the U.S. is in the second house, which uh, is ruled by Venus. So this would kind of give it a, a kind of extra emphasis. And I feel like the second house, the Venus ruled second house uh, has to do with what we value. It is a transformation in values that we're going through is what is important. What is really important to us? It, it's it's like um, we have maybe gotten a, a, away from what is really true and authentic for us in, in our hearts as to what is important, what is valuable. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like this Venus Pluto conjunction is kind of, or, or Venus, uh, uh, Venus Pluto conjunction is kind of um, accentuating that. What is, you know, what, what do we value? Like, do we value freedom of speech? You know, I mean, we see this, you know, this is a big topic right now. Is it something we value? We made it our first amendment, you know, <laughs> right? Wow. you know, yeah. Yeah. Big and of stuff. course, yeah, yeah, you know, and so I think these are some of the things that we are um, conversations and we need to be able to have conversations and we haven't been able to have conversations about things over the last three years and in, in, in about things. Number one, we need to be able to have conversations with each other. Number one. Yeah, you know, yeah. about it, about what is true, what is real, wh what do we value? you know but as a nation it's it's important it's 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 really because they're both you know activating the natal pluto of the united states in the second house and the other thing the second house rules is is you know what we value is money you know we're seeing a huge our um economy has the potential to be very dramatically impacted well we know what's coming you know exactly you know what we don't know but we know that what we have going on doesn't serve a whole lot of people and yeah, so I, and I don't know the future there. And someone has asked me before and it's like, I'm not a financial person. Yeah. I can just tell you that, you know, Uranus is transiting in Taurus and has been, and, you know, Taurus rules money. 
um, you know, the, the second house is being of the chart of the United States is the Taurus house is activated. So I know that's maybe a little complicated, but it, just know that this is an area of big change and transformation. And I would say that those would be two indicators that I would say Pluto conjunct Venus at the uh, on the new year could implicate. Beautiful. Thank you for that. So let's see, we covered Saturn and Pluto. Is there a third? Oh, 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 but I was going to talk oh. about Pluto moving into Aquarius. Oh, oh that's right. What's going to yeah. happen to go from Capricorn, which is Earth, into air of... Oh, Aquarius. yeah, this is, uh, the, you know, Aquarius, in, 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 now Uranus, excuse me, Pluto will only be there for three months. So it's just kind of putting our toe in it. Oh, yeah, okay. what's three months? Do you remember? Let's see. Uh, yeah, from March 23rd to June 11th. So not quite three months, almost so three March months. through June of 2023, Pluto will go from the Earth sign of Capricorn and put its toe into Aquarius. So is Aquarius that is the sign of revolution. Mm -hmm. The last time Pluto was in Aquarius, two major things happened. The French Revolution, one. And two, um, the Constitution of the United States was written the real governing body, the real, you know, and so, and it was a very, the constitution was a very forward um, looking kind of a document. It, it, it was, it, you know, I, I think it was probably channeled. I mean, it was an incredible document, but um, so I feel like, you know, Pluto and, and, and Aquarius rules the people. This is very much about power to the people. I feel like it's, there is, but it's also about a revolution in consciousness is what I feel like it's really about. But Pluto gets down to the nitty gritty, you know, like what is real, what is true. Um, and one of the uh, shadows of this is, um, well, not the shadow, Aquarius is the symbol, one can think, think it's it's water because it's wavy lines, or it can be energy. Like and if we look at it level. as energy, it is the power of energy. And that this is, you know, our, let's say, our um, development of our own soft technology, development of our own consciousness skills, as well as the development of, you know, technology outside of us, you know, AI. You know, and we know AI is coming. And of course, you know, um, AI can be used to help us further grow our consciousness, but it can also be used in place of our consciousness. And that's a pretty dark path. But I feel like this is the challenge that our relationship with technology. Yeah. Okay. Well, I love the idea and reminding everyone listening that the beautiful part of being a spark of the divine source is this magnificent free will. So however we want to move forward as um, a global society, um, when it comes to AI, let's hope that there will be enough consciousness for let's do what is for the highest and greatest good when I think about Aquarius, I also know it's it's hopes and dreams. It's the future. It's also a place of the, perhaps the most connected to the galactic. And you just called out that maybe our constitution had some star support or off-planet off support in its writing and authorship. So perhaps this time will also include um, additional support. The other thing that came up for me was this idea of free energy, of the idea of what they've just discovered in science. Could we not just have a certain free energy and how that would change the whole world, not paying a PG&E bill or, you know, everyone has heat um, or cool. So it, it's fascinating. So there is, yes, a shadow and an equal and opposite light. So Exactly. 
have no and idea. They're, and they're all there. And the one thing I wanted to say too is, you know, another, I'm just going to bring in Bashar and as well as other channels. Mm -hmm. He says the year 2023 is the beginning of open contact. And absolutely, Aquarius is the sign that is most connected to the star nations. And all of the outer planets will have gone through Aquarius recently in the last 20 years. And now Pluto is the last. And Pluto really brings that deep understanding and that um, I feel like it's bringing the revolution in consciousness that it is going to take. But to also know that um, open contact is happening, that the start, and, and, and I think it's so apropos that we are in this galactic astrology um, uh, as a, you know, I'm doing galactic astrology readings i feel like it's kind of like a, a you know welcome to your star family it's like an introduction mm -hmm. because they are you know we as we understand the true nature of reality we begin to realize we're truly never alone and we've never been alone mm -hmm. and um it's a it's a it's a piece of uh remembering yeah, but anyway it, it's happening I sense that. Well, thank you for that. That's it. Really is um, our multi-dimensional organs and sensory organs, especially, are 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 shifting, and so we start thinking we see something or smell something or feel something. For me, it's palpable, especially doing quantum soul guidance sessions. You just feel this union uh, where the team comes in to help support and help remind each of us our full magnificence. So we're way more than we've perhaps thought ourselves to be back to the identity issue, right? So with more and mm -hmm. more of us awakening, it's like, think of the mm -hmm. potential. Well, right. as we get closer to um, the close, is there a third aspect that you'd like to bring up, Sybil? Well, I would like to just bring up one more thing that has just kind of came in and that, that it, but it, it does go back to Saturn in Pisces, but it, and that is, I've had this experience myself and I've been hearing others about other dimensions bleeding into this reality. And I think that's getting you getting used to beginning to remember our multidimensional self because it's bleeding into this reality. And I'd like to just call out for for those of you who may uh, this might be new language for you. Um, just holding this idea that sometimes the thing that we fear the most, something that feels alien or foreign to us could in fact be our ancestor and even weirder it could even be a future self of ourselves so you know when you move into multi-dimensionality the gig is up you know the timeline is gone uh, the separation is gone so the thing that we feared sometimes the most we look in that mirror and we realize it's it's us that we've been afraid of the most so i i'm sorry to jump make that jump but i think that's the kind of conversation we're going to be have having as we move into more of the piscean aquarian um, combination so it's no longer about you know let's just say republican democrat vaccinated unvaccinated it's not this polarization but it's more about coming to a centered point and seeing that wow it's we're all connected and and believe me it's not just outside but it's i'm all connected within me to sometimes the things i like i don't really want to see little green aliens <laughs> you know I, I can deal with them in a concept however that could be um the key to helping move us forward and on our evolutionary journey that it's actually in fact an ancestor <laughs> Right. Or us in another timeline. <laughs> right. I mean, Lisa Royal Holt, you know, all her great works uh, mm -hmm. with um, the Galactic Heritage card deck and the Prism of Lyra, she channels her future self named Sasha. So she's giving us an example. And when we see an example, we think, oh, is that true for me too? So maybe as we move into this year of 2023, we'll start understanding, like you're reminding us, Sybil, that it's an inside job. And wouldn't it be interesting to connect with your future self to help inform your current self? And when you do the numerology on 2023, you add the two plus the two plus the three. And if my math is correct, you get a seven. And seven is the bridge. It's the bridge between the realms, between earth 
and the other dimensions. So it's pretty mm. powerful. If you remember just one thing in this little talk, it's this idea of there is a bridge. Do you want to cross it um, of your own volition? <laughs> or you wait for that little bit of a shove because you're either going to want to stay behind or you want to move into this newer energy, newer world. It is a choice point to make. Um, to stay behind or to move forward and without the judgment. You know, I'm, I'm learning. If they choose to stay behind, great. If they choose to go forward, great. But it's not up to me to judge them. I have to just work on me. Absolutely. That's brilliant. I love that, that the seven is the bridge because that is the best analogy. That is exactly where we are, Ursula, I feel. We are on the bridge as shifting. We're not there yet. We're on the bridge, but it's happening. Well, we, have I, left, we have left the one side and we are on our, our way. <laughs> well, I want to just shout out and say thank you so much, Sybil Star, for coming and playing with me on the playground. For those of you who would like a quantum soul guidance practitioners, I'm sorry, a session with Sybil. She's certified. She has so many other um, potential listings um, for engagement with her if you want an astrological reading, etc. But you can find her again on sybilstar.com. And I just want to, let me stop sharing for, if you could stop sharing for a minute. We okay. both want to, we both want to say congratulations to everybody on a joyful prosperous and peaceful new year and I'll just say my closing thoughts and I'll invite Sybil to as well but for me the takeaway is yes that bridge and it's that choice point of do you want to go and and move towards this 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 point of sovereignty and multi-dimensionality but it's sovereign within yourself as far as claiming that I am way more let me just play with this potential energetic and these narratives perhaps in this new year and just see what might come forward you might surprise yourself you might astral travel you might receive downloads you could come up with the answer that everyone's been asking whatever that question is so I invite you to consider that as you go forward in this 2023 year so what would you like to add Sybil as we close um, well, I just want to say I'm very excited. I can feel the energy shifting and moving. And I, I feel like, uh, like we are on the bridge. And one more thing I wanted to say about Saturn, because Saturn is very much about claiming our own personal authority. And I feel like as we do the inner work and realize that's how manifestation is really happens is that we can we can create the world we want and that uh, because we are claiming our personal authority and it, 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 it's, it's on its way here. I love that. You know, it does require action on our part as far as even if it's just this intention, the action of intention that I, I choose to dream again. And I find that myself especially that I've gotten a little lazy I've just been reacting to everything around me or looking at other people and wondering why are they that way and I have not given myself enough time to actually initiate dreaming again and this is very Piscean when you dream as you shared with us dreaming your reality into beingness it's it's on you it's not me dreaming your reality and then it coming true for you but it's it's this it's basically the call for if are you willing to take the time to dream a new reality for you into being as we all go into 2023 well thank you everybody we hope to see you next time on the ascension playground thank you sybil and we'll see you soon bye thank for now so right, bye bye <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.